The spot. Oops. <laughs> that never happened. <clears throat> Start again. Hey guys, welcome back for another Harbour Unbox video. Today we're talking temps, so things could get a little hot, though they probably won't get firmy hot. Recently, I set out to determine if it's worth paying the premium for the Ryzen 5 1600X over the standard 1600 model, especially if you plan to overclock. The 1600X is priced just 14% or $30 US more, but for me the biggest issue is the fact that the Wraith Spire cooler is dropped from the package. The Spire is AMD's new 95 watt box cooler and it works rather well. It also looks quite nice too. The Spire will allow Ryzen 5 owners to overclock, though as you start to near the CPU's limits, things do get quite hot. Now, the X-rated chips are meant to offer greater overclocking headroom thanks to the binning process, though we have seen little evidence of this. That said, with Ryzen's very limited overclocking potential, we have found little difference between the various models. For example, we have come across 1600X models that are limited to 3.9 GHz, while we have tested 1600 chips that are good for 4.1 GHz. So as always, it comes down to the silicon lottery. I wouldn't recommend buying the 1600X over the 1600 because you believe it will ensure greater overclocking headroom. Again, it just seems to be luck of the draw at this point. Anyway, a few viewers did raise some interesting questions that I didn't address in my previous video. Things like if you already have a good aftermarket cooler that's AM4 compatible, is it worth buying the 1600X? Or if you plan to overclock the base model 1600 to the max, should you ditch the box cooler anyway and pick up a proven budget performer such as Cooler Masters 212? For the first question, again, I would still opt for the cheaper 1600. With the 1600X, nothing is guaranteed, and I'm not even sure if your odds are any better at this point. $30 US isn't a huge amount of money, but still, why waste it? Now, when it comes to maximum overclocking, hitting 4 GHz or beyond, if possible, should you upgrade the cooler anyway? Well, the Wraith Spire does work at 4 GHz, and with the default fan profile on my Gigabyte B350 board, it's not even that loud. That said though, it is very hot. So for those of you who requested it, I have decided to compare the Wraith Spire to the Cooler Master 212 on the Ryzen 5 1600, 1500X and 1400. Please note that the 1600 and 1500X do come with the Wraith Spire, while the 1400 comes with a smaller cooler, a 65 watt model, known as the Wraith Stealth. The Stealth won't be able to handle a 4 GHz overclock, so for that particular CPU you will need to upgrade the cooler. Here are a few quick notes. Testing was conducted on the Gigabyte AB350 Gaming 3 motherboard, and using this board, the 1400 was limited to 3.9 GHz, the 1500X reached 3.95 GHz, and the 1600 was still good for 4 GHz. That said, all three processors can achieve 4 GHz in my AM4 test system, which uses the ASRock X370 Tai Chi. The 1600 can even hit 4.1 GHz comfortably on that board. Overclocked, all three CPUs were running at 1.4 volts. The Cooler Master Hyper 212 is a super popular aftermarket cooler as it costs just $20 US and does a really good job. On hand though, I only have the 212 Turbo which features an additional 120mm fan, taking the grand total to two. Thankfully though, this model does feature AM4 socket support right out of the box. To mimic base model 212 performance, I have tested with just a single 120mm fan installed. Finally, for measuring temperatures, we used hardware monitor version 1.31, and according to AMD, this does accurately report operating temperatures of all the Ryzen processors. First up, let's see what kind of gains the 212 can offer before any overclocking even takes place. With the Wraith Spire, all three Ryzen 5 processors peaked at a little over 60 degrees, which is very respectable for a box cooler, particularly given how quiet it is. That said, there is still room for huge temperature improvements with the 212, especially for the 1400. The budget quad-core saw temperatures drop by almost 30% with the aftermarket cooler. Meanwhile, the 1500X ran 17% cooler and the 1600 14% cooler. The idle temperatures, though, were all much the same, but this is to be expected. Okay, so now on to the overclocking results. This is where things get a bit dicey with the Wraith Spire. That said, though, the cooler was still reasonably quiet. Although it was audible over the case fans, it wasn't exactly loud. So you could spin up the fan a bit harder under load to rein in those temperatures a bit more. Using the default fan profile, the 1600 and 1500X were getting close to hitting 90 degrees, and that's not far from the 95 degree thermal limit. 
Moving to the 212 did reduce temperatures massively, dropping the 1600 from 89 degrees to just 68 degrees, a massive 24% reduction. The 212 and its single 120mm fan were extremely quiet and certainly couldn't be heard over the case fans. This then makes it a worthwhile upgrade for those that do plan to overclock. So as impressive as AMD's box cooler is when compared to the junk Intel include with their CPUs, it's still no substitute for a decent tower style cooler. Still though, if you can handle a bit of fan noise, then winding the fan speed up should keep the temperatures in check even at 4 gigahertz. So I'd probably opt for something like Cooler Masters 212, given how significant the thermal improvements were. And for me, this really makes buying the cheaper non-X 1600 even easier to justify. The $30 you save can go towards buying a 212, and you're basically breaking even on that purchase. That should have us covered for this one, guys. But as always, if you have any questions, feel free to drop them below, and I'll do my best to answer them. I'm your host, Steve. See you again soon.